Illinois and uh, grew up and was raised in Maryland. He served an LDS mission in Nevada and he later attended BYU. He uh, played on the lacrosse team and graduated in computer science. It was during his uh, last semester here in December 2001, uh, during finals week, I think, that he started a Gemini Inc. Uh, a Gemini offers business web accessible software for tracking and scheduling and reporting. Clinton, come tell you. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome, thanks for coming. I started a company called A Gemini about seven years ago, six and a half years ago. And I'm glad you're here to hear this, uh, here today to hear the story. I'm going to touch upon five principles today. Let me just tell you what they are quickly. I'm going to talk about the concept and planning of this company, the startup, the growth, the maturity of the company, and uh, the harvest. And uh, it's been a fun ride. I really appreciate you guys being here, so let me just jump into it. My company now has two products. My first product is called a Gemini CMS, customer management software, and a second product that I'll just briefly touch on later at the end of the lecture. It's called the Gemini MIT mobile inventory tracking. And uh, we provide these uh, tools to our clients, and they use these tools to track their customer base and also to help uh, track their in inventory. And we found it to be a great little niche. And uh, we've got grown from uh, one client to over 500 clients, or approximately 500 clients to this day. Uh, December 17, 2001, I was finishing up at BYU, studying computer science, and I was just living right off campus, and probably in the same situation where much of you are, finishing school, trying to decide what you're doing after school, wondering if someone's going to hire you. I uh, finished school without a job. And if anybody remembers that time period, 2001, it was during, uh, towards the end of the, the 90 bust, and the, they had an economic downturn, came into a recession, and as I was graduating, this recession was kind of escalating, getting worse, and I was interviewing with some great companies, PricewaterhouseCoopers, which I thought was a great company. I had a couple interviews working um, potentially in a job in Tampa. I was going to do the new hire training, training on new technologies for this company, or maybe a data mining job in their uh, Colorado office. So I studied computer science. I thought these would be a perfect fit for me. I would learn a ton. This would help me maybe get into MBA school one day. And that's kind of the path that I thought I would take. Although I, I was always very entrepreneurial, at least I wanted to be entrepreneurial. I, I always wondered how I could start my own business and what it would take. Uh, didn't have any ideas, though. And uh, so I obviously just continued on the course of getting an education and finding a job, and maybe something would happen. Along the, along the road. But obviously, at the very end of my last semester, couldn't get a job. In fact, I, people were laying off uh, all these people. I, I think PricewaterhouseCoopers downsized about 30%. So it was very discouraging. Um, you know, went to school, thought, you know, take the typical path and get a job, but just couldn't get a job. And it was weird. So luckily, along the way, I had I'd always uh, paid for my own schooling and take, taking care of myself. And my last semester, I was uh, developing an access database for a home security company there in Provo. And they had this really, really bad access database. And they paid me by the hour to maintain it, to add more functionality. And after three or four months, you know, starting in September, coming to December, I was, I was doing this for them, maybe 10, 15, 20 hours a week. At the very end, my mind was churning. I was like, what can I do? So luckily, I came up with this idea that I would approach them and say, look, I I will redevelop this system that you guys have. I'll make it really powerful. I'll give you the latest technology. I'll own intellectual property for myself. I'll host it on servers. I'll take up all the technology needs of your business. All you guys have to do is pay me per customer that comes into the system. <clears throat> and that was my idea. Thinking, th looking back, I wondered what I was thinking because this company was probably going to do maybe 5,000 customers that, that semester. I was only going to charge them, I think, $2 a customer is what it was. So I would have made approximately ten grand that year with that client. It's not, not a whole lot. But uh, luckily, I didn't think about it too, uh, too thoroughly. And uh, I, just, I just started. I just started developing this system. I, I would work. I, I got into a pattern where I'd wake up, do, I'd go to the gym, do some reading, then I'd start working around 9. And I would eat, 
and I'd go to bed around midnight every night, and I did that six days a week for at least a year and a half straight. And during this period, I turned down every social opportunity, trips to Lake Powell, trips anywhere with all my friends trying to talk me into coming with them. But I, I looked at what I was doing as an opportunity. As time went on, I started realizing, hey, maybe there'll be other people that would want to use this product. So within, at the end of December till beginning of May, when the summer program started for this one client, I was able to pick up two other clients. So I had three clients going into the summer using really a really poor database. But they, were, um, they took a chance, and uh, I worked hard for them. And uh, that's kind of how a gem that got started. That was the very, very beginning of uh, my concept and planning. And luckily, I listened to my clients. I grew. Uh, I added more functionality to my system. And by the end of the summer, I had 13 clients using my product. And uh, the product just kept going and kept going. And that's uh, the very beginning. Let me stop and just throw out uh, to you guys. Please raise your hand. If you ever have questions throughout this lecture, please ask them. Do you have a question? OK. But I, I want to hear what you guys, I want to hear from you, and I want to build my lecture on based on your questions. So the, the second uh, step of um, this lecture is the, the startup. Let me kind of just go through maybe the first five years of what happened in the startup of the Gemini. The idea was very simple. I had no idea if it would work, but I, I went for it. I, I gave it everything I had. I sacrificed all kinds of uh, you know, social opportunities and other things, and, and, and in fact, Every, just about every penny that I made into this, the beginning of a Gemini, I reinvested. I only took enough to survive, bare, mu bare minimum. In fact, there were times where I had other people in the company being paid more than me in order to, to bootstrap the company and to grow the company and to get it to where I thought maybe one day this, this company would be benefic beneficial for me. So the very beginning, I was doing everything. I was wearing every hat. I was sales rep. I was programmer. I was billing manager. I was um, support personnel. I did everything. And uh, that's what it took. That's why I was working all the time. If I was out on a, like a, visiting a client, I'd come back and work on the functionality later into the evening. So that was about uh, what happened for my first year of, of the product. About one year into the company is when I hired a buddy of mine who actually lost his job as well, or lost a job during this economic downturn. And uh, what I did was didn't have an office. I was still working in my bedroom right here in Campus View South, right off of campus. And I, uh, I hired a buddy. He was from Provo. Bought him a cell phone. Paid his cell phone bill. He would work in front of the, the by his pool. And uh, we would talk on, on, I think it was MSN at the time. We'd always, he'd always be asking me questions about the product. It's like, how do I answer this question from this client? So he was uh, doing sales for me. And I was still doing support and programming and billing and all that stuff. About um, uh, 18 months into this company, I decided I needed more time to work on development, and I needed a support person to start talking to all my clients. So here I was. I was, had a guy working at, at his pool. I was working in my bedroom, and uh, I needed to hire another person, but I had to get an office. I had to get a phone system. This is, this is how you grow a business, right? You have to make these decisions. But at the time, everything was falling in place. Luckily, I had a client. They had an extra room in their office. They wanted me to be closer to them so they could have access to me and say, I need this, we need this. Because I was taking all the ideas from my clients. I didn't really know what my clients needed. I had them tell me what they needed, so I would develop it. So it made sense for me to be right next door to them. They gave me an office. I used their phone system, so I had free rent. And the deal was I would just give them the software for free. So it worked out perfect. Um, so I hired a third person. She started supporting my pro product and, start and continually grow, would grow and grow gradually. About uh, two and a half years into the company, I had to make another, I had to make another decision. I had to uh, invest in more infrastructure. And this time I needed servers. I was running out of server space and the performance of the servers weren't great, so I had to sp uh, spend some money. Really for the first time, first and only time of, in my company where I went into debt, I bought four servers, cost me about $30,000. I, I moved my servers from Virginia up to Orem into a co-location area. Now that, that co-location is about a mile from my office. So what I did was I, I put it on a credit card and I had another credit card. I transferred the balance to my Discover card, which had a 0% balance. And I was lucky, lucky enough that I was able to pay off that debt in about, I think it was about eight months. Um, about four and a half years into the business, actually, one more, one more part. I had several clients in Provo that were using my product. And in fact, let me, let me ask, 
who here did summer sales this past summer? Did anybody use a Gemini at your office at, with your business? What, what companies were you guys with? Apex? Platinum? There's four home security companies in this valley that don't use my product. Pinnacle, Apex, Platinum, and Icon. So I have almost every single other one that I know of that are, that are using my product. So at the time, I had two uh, Dish Network clients using my uh, software. One of my clients had a Gemini in their office, and the other client uh, kind of got jealous, actually. They invited me to move my office into their, their uh, office, or I'm sorry, move my business into their office. They said they would give me free rent, and they would pay for, for, my, uh, for my product. So at that point, I was still getting free rent, but this time I moved and I was making money off of this client. So it kind of was a good move for me. But about year four and a half, I decided to grow up. I needed to get my own office space. I needed to get my own phone system. And I did that about uh, year four and a half. And about year five and a half is when I started working on a new product. And it's that blue banner over there, the Gemini Mobile Inventory Tracking. So that's kind of the, the startup. Um, how it's gone, and right now we're about year six and a half, and uh, we're working on, we're starting to work on our third product, and I'll tell you what it is. Um, I'm going to call it a Gemini Smart. A lot of people have smartphones, and a lot of this, these guys that are working for home security companies, they're out there knocking doors, and what happens is when they make a sale, they have to take the customer information and run a credit on that customer. So they have to call their office and say, here's the customer information, I need to run a credit score, let me know if they approve. And it's kind of an awkward situation because a sales rep is knocking on a house that they don't know, and they're sitting in this living room or kitchen asking for social security information and all kinds of information, and they're waiting on this phone to find out if they're getting credit, or credit approval. So um, what I'm going to do is on, my, on these phones, I'm going to allow clients to have their sales reps log into my application, run a credit check directly from the, the cell phone, and within as fast as they can type, and click a button, they should know they, there will be a credit approval for that customer, which is going to save potentially 10 to 15 minutes for the sales rep in the house. And it's potentially it's a huge value for people that are working for these home security companies. And, and I'm excited about that product. I'm going to start working on Actually, I've already started working on that product. Any questions up to this point? Let's break the ice, somebody, please. Um, he's a really good friend. He's working for a very cool company uh, that's selling real estate in Panama. And uh, they, there's this island down there, and there's some really cool property down there. So he's selling um, villas in uh, Panama. It's a beautiful place. I've been down there twice, and uh, he's still a really good, really good friend of mine. Unf I wish he would have stayed with me, but my company, I was growing my company slowly. I wasn't trying to take on money, and I was, wasn't trying to just absolutely grow at 100% every year. My, inf my growth rate has been about 30% every year, and it's been manageable where I've, I've only had to incrementally grow my infrastructure. So, but he's still a good friend. He, he was great. He would, he would be, if he was still on board, my company would probably be a lot bigger because he was such a great sales guy. Really good people person. Any other questions? Please. Yeah. When I graduated, I had no money, had a car that was paid for. My rent was 350 a month, and I, I, all I had was a laptop, and I knew how to program. So all I needed was enough money to pay rent, to eat, and pay my car insurance. And I did that for at least a year. And uh, I didn't have debt until I bought those servers at year two and a half, and I had it for about eight months. It's very, very rare. Most, time, most of the time when you start a company, it takes some kind of capital. But uh, it was something that uh, just maybe lucked out. Or maybe in, when you're developing technology, maybe it's easier. But um, I, it, was, it was a very fortunate situation for me. I can't stand debt, even to this day. I hate debt. And uh, I liked everything. I like to pay off everything. And it's just something I've learned. And I was very fortunate to have the, that when I started uh, Gemini. Thanks for that question. Anybody else? Okay, so that, that's the startup. Startup of the Gen 9, that's the first five and a half years in a nutshell. The growth. Growing a company is super important. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's hard. 
At first, I did everything I could to find local clients. I, I had zero knowledge of the industry that I was in. The industry that I, my product mostly takes care of is Dish Network, DirecTV, and then I'm in other, uh, in other industries like satellite internet, home security, t broadband in general. And, uh, did I, okay, there it is. So, as you can see, this little flash goes through some of the functionality, some of the, the companies I'm integrated with. But uh, I had no knowledge of the satellite industry. That was, it was my first clients and home security. So I had no knowledge of it. I was just developing this system based on the knowledge that was coming to me from my, my clients. And I had no, I, no idea how big the industry was, big or small. I, I was so ignorant, I thought, man, if I could just get 10 companies all doing 5,000 customers a year, making uh, you know, 100 grand, that'd be great, you know? And, but I had no idea that there were, there's literally 20,000 or more retailers in my little niche. And I only have 500 of them using my product at this time. So there's still a lot of opportunity for my, for my company to grow. And at this point, um, well, what I would do is I would find every company in Utah that I could possibly knock on their door. And uh, once I got all the companies around here using my product, I found a website called Sky Retailer. They sent out an email every day direct marketing to people in the satellite industry. So I put a banner ad, linked it to my site, and um, this is my site, and there's a cool feature that I want to show you. This is my free trial site. And uh, they click on the free trial. This is just like a simple, quick wizard that they see. And uh, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to pr provide a trial site of my software for 15 days. And all they have to do is give me their first name, their last name, their email, they hit continue here. Uh, and this is uh, Firefox, and this doesn't come up great on Firefox. Uh, so they fill out the rest of the information. They tell me how they heard about me. You know, they may have heard me through a sales manager or just whatever. I'll just put Sky Retailer. And they fill out the information to hit continue. And really what happens actually is when they hit continue on the first button, I get a text message. And it tells me someone's at my website and they're setting up a trial site. So I get, I, I get my sales reps all ready. When they hit continue on the second button, I get another text message. All their information that they've entered in on this page comes into my internal customer database. And this is a list of all the customers, that have, all the retailers that have come to my site, set up trial sites. And what I do is I give them 15 days on that trial. And if you notice right here, this column tells you days. And it looks like these guys have 12 days left in their site. They set up their site last Friday. These guys set up their site today, and they've already sent in a contract and become a client. So since last Monday, that would be right here, up to here, I've gotten, I counted that earlier, that would be 18 trial sites that have come to my, my, my web page, set up a free trial site. We have all their information. So as soon as they set the trial site, we call them before they even log in, and they're blown away. They're amazed. They're trying to log in, and they're getting a phone call from a Gemini. They're like, wait, how'd you hear about us? You know, how'd you get my number, right? And they don't realize that technology comes to you instantaneously. So we call them because we have their number. So what we do is immediately we try to talk to them, find out what their needs are. We get them into our product. We show them our product as much as we can. And this product sells itself. We don't really need true salespeople out there selling or telling them about uh, how great our product is. We show them how to use it, and they see the value. So um, we probably get sometimes like 60 trial sites a month. Sometimes we get less. Sometimes we get more. So what we do is, at this point, we don't even do marketing. I don't even spend a penny on the Sky Retailer site anymore. People just hear about us through word of mouth. We've set up partnerships with people like DirecTV, Dish Network, and their sales managers are telling all the people they're working with across the country about our customer management software. Any other questions? Please. Yeah, do you have any problems with people not wanting to put their information on your site so they won't try your product? Yeah, there's always people who don't understand. They come into our website, they set up a trial site, and they don't even understand what we're, what we're providing. They don't understand that it's web-based. And some of the complaints we have, well, we're not going to pay monthly for your product, or well, how do we know your product's secure? We don't want to put our data into your system. What if it goes down? There's all kinds of concerns that we have. But we're able to to solve that by saying, well, look, you know, you have to put all your web, all your data into Dish Network site. That's on the web. So there's just there's things that we've learned that helps ease that ease their concerns. And we tell them we have 500 clients. I mean, they do it. You can do it. Please. 
about 30%. Let me show you this. I'm going to scroll down. As I scroll down, you'll notice you'll start seeing different colors come up. So yellow is um, meaning it's like five days or less on their trial site. Red means they just barely exp expired within the last three days. And blue, they have expired longer. And then you'll start seeing these other um, colors, this, or this other light gray color. And you see this yes right there. So of these customers since the 21st, um, uh, August 21st, I've got, that's my second yes. So I've only gotten, of these trial sites since August 21st, I've only had two clients sign up. But generally, we give them 15 days. They usually take 15 days in their trial site. So as I go beyond, you'll see that you know, another eight trial sites or so came up and nobody signed up. But here's another one, Powerline. And all of a sudden, here's a big streak. I got five out of seven. So it's, a, it's about 30% of the people that set up trial sites sign up. And that's one thing that we're always trying to change. But really my, what I've seen and the reason why they're not signing up is because a lot of them, not, they'll set up trial sites, but they won't even log in. They'll give us their phone number. We'll call them 100 times. We can't even reach them. So a lot of times these people are, they're so busy, they can't even look into a product that would help their business. And uh, a, lot of our, a lot of these people that are set up at trial sites are using Excel to track everything in their business. And Excel is great for just data entry, but what if you want to run a report? How do you, uh, you know, how do you data mine Excel? I mean, it's, it's, it's tedious. It takes time. And a Gemini solves so many different uh, little features for um, these retailers. Really, the whole point is we're going to replace, instead of you hiring someone to do something, you can hire a Gemini, and we can do a lot of those tasks for you. Please. Uh, there are four, three really that are worth talking about, a fourth one not so concerned about. When I got into this business, there was only one software provider for the industry. They are now out of business. And then the, two of the other three are, started about the same time that I started. So we've, all, we've been growing together uh, you know, along, the, along the way. And, uh, Really, one of my competitors, I actually gave him the idea to enter into this space. He was a retailer in Salt Lake. He was developing his own system for internal use. And he, he thought, man, what a great idea. And it is a great idea. So he started developing his system further, started selling it, and he's a competitor now. Any other questions? Please. I'm still just a little confused about what it is that Gemini does. Okay. All right, let me... Get back to the website. Okay, so my first product is a customer management system. So it's a web-based database that tracks customers, first and foremost, customers for retailers that are bringing on customers for home security, customers into Dish Network. I mean, who uses Dish Network or DirecTV? Or who uses cable? So you're buying these products from a retailer for the most part not directly from DirecTV, Comcast, etc. You're buying it from a retailer who may very well be my client. What Dish Network, DirecTV, Comcast requires of these retailers is to track the customers, service the customers for 180 days or more. You, they, you're buying uh, receivers and satellites that you need to install in these customers' houses. So you have inventory that you need to track. So these guys may be spending $50,000 a, a month on inventory. So the Gemini will track inventory. We have all kinds, of, we have probably have over 70 reports. So you want to know um, payroll reporting. You want to know sales reporting, accounting reporting type stuff. So we have all kinds of features. It's an enterprise management system that will run a retailer business. Does that answer your question? Anybody else? Please. Where are most of your customers at? Are they mostly centralized here in Utah, or do you get it from all over? Uh, I, have com I have companies in every state, in Puerto Rico as well. I've been to Puerto Rico to visit my client there. I've been to Alaska to visit a client. Um, I have a lot of clients in Utah, a lot of the home security companies, but I've been to California 10 times to visit clients. And I was there at the end of August, and I signed up a really, really big client down there. Um, I have clients in Hawaii, Maine, pretty much everywhere. And uh, I do also have clients that in Canada, and I have call centers in other nations that are using my product through retailers here in the, in the States. 
Well, there's a question here, then in the back. Okay, let me, uh, that's next. Can I, can I answer that next? What was your question? Pricing? Yeah, well, it's, it's definitely evolved. At first, I, was, I had no idea anything about the industry. I didn't realize that some people only sold 20 customers a month, and then some sold, I have one that does 18,000 a month. So um, the pricing isn't the same, definitely. And, I, and I'll show that to you. What was your question? Is this like similar to ACT and Goldmine? Yeah, very, very much so. But the difference is ACT is very broad. It's generic for just about anybody that needs basic customer management tracking. The difference is that Gemini has wrapped itself around this niche. So everybody in the satellite industry has specific functionalities just for the satellite industry. And there's the value. And I'm supporting my product for, for these type of retailers. And I'm diversified now, home security, broadband, all types of other products are used in my, my system now. Here, let's go here. I have myself, three full-time engineers, and four support personnel. So pretty small. I've, uh, I've actually kind of downsized a little because my support, we've, we've become more efficient so I don't need as many support. So as I'm growing, I'm still growing 30% consistently, but I've been able to even shrink my infrastructure, which is pretty rare. Did someone else have a question over here? OK. So let's get into uh, the, so basic, the basic growth at this point is word of mouth. I had Dish Network in my office last week. And uh, to me, uh, it's amazing for me to have this billion dollar company having pers uh, you know, employees coming to visit my office, they're sitting there in a meeting telling me that uh, when, we, when we meet with DirecTV, you know, we talk about a Gemini because they know that some, some of their biggest dealers are using my product. And it's, it's really humbling, actually, to see these people come to, my, to me looking for me to solve problems for their retailers. It's, it's exciting at the same time. Okay, so let's um, talk about something that's probably more interesting to you guys, and that's uh, the maturity of a Gemini. Let's talk money. Okay, so where is a Gemini going? Well, here's the pricing of my product. It's definitely evolved. I think at first I had two gold plans. A gold plan for satellite is $1 a customer, but a gold for a home security is $2 a customer. So when I first started, I was charging $2 a customer for my two home security clients and $1 a customer for my, uh, my one Dish Network client. But then I started getting more companies that were interested and they were only doing 20 a month. And I was thinking, 20 bucks a month. Do I even want to talk to these people for $20 a month? So I, I, I said, okay, I need to evolve this. I need to create more plans that will they'll meet the needs of all different types of companies out there. So I created copper, bronze, silver, gold, platinum, diamond. And within these six plans, I can have any type of retailer out there buying or using my product. And this is how I charge them. I charge them a monthly minimum, if they're copper, $60, and all the way down to diamond, $1,000 a month. So they're paying at the very first day of every month whatever plan they sign up on. That's what they're, that's they're paying. But um, some clients, I have clients that are doing you know, $18,000 a, a, a month. I need to... Um, kind of alter this. I'm, they're not going to pay me $9,000 a month. Let me explain something. So basically what I was getting to is everybody has the opportunity to go over their plan in a sense. So copper, they get 20 customers a month for $60. For diamond, they get 2,000 customers a month for $1,000. And if they go over their minimum, uh, their allotted customers a month, there's an excess fee. That's what this column is. So just as for a cell phone plan, you may get a certain amount of minutes. If you exceed those minutes, you're paying extra per minute. So my customers will pay on a copper $3 per customer over their $20 minimum. Or for diamond, they're paying $0.50 cents a customer if they go over 2000 because that's what they're allotted for the diamond package. But like I said, I have a client that, pay, that uh, does 18000 a month. They're not, 
they're well below the 50 cent range, so I had to alter the, what their, their excess fee is. And, and what it turns out the excess fee was really a really important decision to make early on because it's really, it, it's turned out to be about 30% of my revenue, sometimes greater, 30 to 40% of my revenue I collect through excess fees. And what they get is everything in the system. I, fu I fully support them for every piece of functionality in the system, whether they're small or large. My office is open 9 to 6 every day. We're, they're taking phone, we're taking phone calls. We're answering their questions. And we can support any client as long as they're paying this. And they can get unlimited use to our system. Okay, any questions about pricing? Please. Just evolved, basically. Yeah. As I found bigger and smaller clients, some people needed to pay more, some people pay, pay less. Kind of like bulk buying, the bigger you got, like the bulk, you get a, small, a more competitive price. Any, anybody else? Okay. So what I've created is, I'm going to show you how I can project what I'm going to make for 2008. So ideally, I want to, my goal is to sign up at least 10 new clients a month. So I take this as a model. Let's say I have one, every month I have two copper, two bronze, two silver, two gold, and one platinum. So 10 clients a month, and that's what they're going to pay me minimum each month. So two coppers is really 120 a month, two bronze is 200 that month, et cetera. So as I add that up, 10 clients a month is approximately $2,000 in new monthly revenue. Everybody pays a $395 setup fee, so it's about $4,000, totaling approximately $6,000 new revenue each month. So as long as I'm bringing on 10 clients a month, this is kind of what I expect. So what's the revenue over a 12-month period? Period For a Gemini, I could basically go through and say, starting January, I brought on 10 clients. I'm not, in this model, I'm not showing the, uh, the setup fee. I'm just talking about monthly revenue here. So $2,000 in January. February, another 10 clients come on, so that's two more thousand. Fed March, all the way down to December. So every month, I brought on 10 new clients. But what happens is, for those clients that I brought on in January, I'm charging them their same monthly minimum 12 times that year. So really, 12 months later, for my January clients, they paid me 24,500 in revenue. February, I'm collecting 11 months in revenue, which is 22,5, all the way down to December. So for, let's, my example is for 2007. So 170,000 in new revenue on top of my existing customers. For almost 50,000 in setup fees, so it's, I projected 2007, I would be at 215,000 new dollars in new revenue. Let me show you what I actually brought on. Instead of bringing on 10 clients, I averaged almost 12. So 141 new clients came on in 2007. So it's an average of $2,100 a month in that reoccurring uh, revenue. So that $2,100, that $21,000 times 12 is actually 25,455. So $25,000 for all of my clients now, or no, $25,000 for 12 months of that client paying. So I projected what I brought on in 2007, what those new clients would bring to a Gemini for 2008. Just that year brought on $25,000 new revenue a month. So that comes out to about, in 2008, my projection was $305,000 in new revenue, $91,000 in the excess fees that I talked about. It's about 30%. So for for 2008, I've increased my revenue about $400,000 just for what I made in sales in 2007. And that's not including all my existing customers. It's kind of complicated. Hopefully, you guys understood that. Any questions? So this is, I can now say, OK, my, I'm averaging, let's say, I'm growing at 15 new customers a month. This is how I would project my revenue going forward. And that's just like a simple model of how I would project uh, what, uh, the growth of a Gemini. But along the way, obviously, there's other things to talk about instead of money. So what have I learned? I read a book that probably a lot of you guys read, and it's called Standing for Something by Gordon B. Hinckley. 
And I found this little quote, and it says, executive ability seems to have little correlation with intelligence, imagination, or brilliance. And quite honestly, this makes me feel good, because I don't look at myself as brilliant, super intelligent, and uh, you know, maybe I have imagination, but maybe uh, I don't have the imagination of someone else that's, you know, maybe thinks far beyond me. So I thought, that's good. That's good for me. I, uh, there's things that I'm weak at, and there's things I need to improve on. But then he talks about four points of leadership. And they, uh, those four points are, he says, effective leaders practice conservation of time. They have an eye fixed on new developments. They build in the strength, strengths of their colleagues. And they starve out the problems and they feed the opportunities. Now let's take the first point. That President Hinckley practices what he preaches. Conservation of time. Has anybody ever been in a meeting where Gordon B. Hinckley exceeded you know, the scheduled block? I've never been in a meeting where he went longer than it was scheduled. In fact, he would, he would always finish you know, seven minutes earlier. And, what I, what I, and my point here is he practiced conservation of time. In the time allotted for to get something done, he gets it done. He gets it done before the time allotted. Some people will just talk and talk and talk and really not even get anything done in that time they're talking. But I looked at President Hinckley as someone that used his time effectively. He wanted to teach something during that time period, and he got it delivered in that time period. And that's uh, something I really thought was... Uh, really valid and it's something we try to, to focus on. In fact, we try to focus on all four of these things so we can be effective in growing our business. Um, so I'm going to take one of his principles, effectively just have their eyes fixed on new developments. And as the president of Gemini, it's important to me to be growing the company. We have one product, customer management software, CMS, and we've been growing that consistently. But I also felt like there was other ways to, to bring revenue into the company. And uh, let's talk briefly about our product called Gemini MIT, Mobile Inventory Tracking. As you can see, or if you can see, there's, it's a phone. It's a Motorola phone. And at the bottom of the phone, there's a scanner. And really, the whole concept here is you can extend your mobile inventory tracking with this product. We use a data plan. When you guys are text messaging, you're using a data plan to send a text to somebody through another phone. We use a data plan on that phone. We have barcode scanners, scan your inventory, click a send button, and the data is transmitted in a text file to our servers. We read that, that file into our CMS product, into our tracking system. And there's a lot of power here. We have warehouses that don't get internet. They don't have computers. So all they need to do is get a phone. We have GPS data so we can track where installers are. If they're... If they have a phone, they're in the field, we need to get an install done. We have GPS data on that phone. We know where your installers are. We know where your customer is. We know who the closest installer is. So there's a lot of functionality in this product. And I'll, let me tell you why I'm excited about this product. Obviously, we, we charge for this product. We charge $60 a month per phone. My goal by the end of 2009 as I've, I've completely developed this product, I'm ready to start marketing it. I really haven't marketed yet. I'm going to probably start marketing it at, at the end of this year. My goal for next year is to bring on 1,000 new phones. 1,000 new phones. We charge $60, but we have to pay $20 to a company called AirClick. We make $40 per phone. If I'm able to sell 1,000 phones next year, we're bringing on $40,000 in new revenue for a Gemini. I want to bring on another 1,000 phones the next year, 2010. But what happens is, once we hit the 1,000 phone plateau, instead of making $40 a phone, we're making $45 a phone for all of them. So now we're at $90,000 a month in new revenue. By the end of 2011, my goal is to have 4,000 phones, now making $50 per phone, which is equaling $2.4 million in new revenue, just with our second product. And uh, that's something that I have my eyes fixed on. I am very, very focused on developing my first product, but also working on new technologies so that the company will continue to grow. Now let me talk about my final, my final thought here. There's a book that I highly recommend. It's called Good to Great. Once my life started slowing down, I was able to spend time reading and doing other things like dating or being more social. I found time to read a book called Good to Great. And in this book, it has this concept. And it talks about this flywheel. And the flywheel is this big metal, metal iron wheel that's placed horizontally on this axis. And they talk about pushing this flywheel. 
Your job is to push this flywheel. And you're using all your strength to push this very, very heavy, heavy let's say it's 5,000 pound flywheel, to get it to rotate once. But then you, you have to keep pushing it. Your job is to continually push this flywheel over and over again. So after another hour, you get another rotated rotation out of this wheel. You keep pushing it, you keep pushing it. Then all of a sudden it starts picking up speed and it goes a little faster. So after three hours, you're up to five rotations and then it's up to six. So then, you're, then what you'll see is because of the momentum and the speed or the, the weight of the, of the flywheel, it starts kind of moving on its own. But you're still pushing and you're pushing. And then all of a sudden this thing starts moving faster and faster until a point where the same energy that you were pushing the first, very first push, is, it's, it's going into there, but you're getting many, many rotations out of this wheel. And then they talk about a breakthrough. And that's what a great company experiences. A good company will push this flywheel and push it and push it, but at the breakthrough moment, that, that wheel will basically start rotating on itself with, the same, with a, a less amount of, uh, of push, basically. And then you look back and you say, well, what push was, so, was most, well, the most important? And really, as you look back, you can't really say one push is more important than the other. But the whole point is a good company will just will go and go, and then they'll find a point where they'll break through and they become a great company. And that's what this book's all about. And I've tried to take some of the principles in this book and to apply them into a Gemini. And I like to think that we've reached our breakthrough. There, the energy that I spend today is not nowhere near where it was six and a half years ago. At this point, instead of my business running my life, I'm running my business. I can walk away from my business, and my business continues to go forward. And uh, it hasn't come without a lot of sweat and a lot of hard work, but we've applied basic principles into our product. We listen to our, our clients. We try to develop the best product, and we feel like we have a product that our clients love. They, it's worth them paying to use. And at this point, I, I like to think that we're, I'm going to see that growth continually until who knows what happens with this business. But there's, do you have a question? If there's no other questions, I'm going to end my lecture there. I really appreciate you guys coming. Hopefully, you guys got something out of this, this lecture. I hope that if anybody in this room has any desire to start a business, become an entrepreneur, that you will actually do it. There's so much reward in, in owning a, a company. There's a lot of freedom that is provided. But more importantly to me, I, I love the very fact that I'm employing people. I'm, I'm a part of other people's lives. And it's important to me to have a company that other people are benef benefiting from. It's very rewarding for me. And I, I, would I would love to see other people with that same experience. On your way out, I, I brought t-shirts for everybody. I have girl sizes as well as guy sizes. Where are the girls? The girl sizes are on the table that you guys are sitting on. There's a youth large and a youth medium. And all the guy shirts are right here. So if you could, grab one shirt. I have another class. I should have plenty for the second class. Grab a shirt on the way out. And I appreciate it.